how difficult it is to gain visibility on mm. the platform, I feel like it's getting a little easier. You know, Interesting. like there, there's a lot more space for people to breathe and you aren't competing with like hundreds of thousands of new people piling in, you know, because like, yeah, there's still a few. But right, even right, you right. remember making an account took like six weeks. Dude, it was, like yeah, it was and, crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, that's you the thing to, that, to confirm. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing with a lot of people, too. Is that the same thing with all other cryptocurrency? They Not all of it. OK, it, not all of it is that much of a waiting period, because that's almost like so like it's a social aspect with cement, right? Like with the whole yeah. social media and all that yep. stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, th I feel like <clears throat> Steam is like the number one like social crypto currency. Mm. You know, I don't think there are that many that are that based around, you know, the so a social medium, yeah. you know? Yeah. A lot of the other ones do other things, but, you know, nothing really like that. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start. We're recording, right? Um, on the audio, yeah. Yeah, I was just so doing a little test. Yeah, it's no, that's it. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Dude. Oh, I sorry. I just clicked. I want to use that. I'll save it, yeah. Yeah, bro. But I was just seeing, let's see how this sounds. This one should sound even better than the last one. Check, check, one, two. One, two, mic check out. Yep. Come sit over check. here. <laughs> oh, check, check, one, two. Hey, hey, let me have that job. Hey, oh, yeah, that sounds great. One, two, right. check. That should, that should probably be. But yeah, dude, point being is like right now is a really Yeah, bro, I'm back. using that. So I'm using that. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that on YouTube. Uh, this way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting yeah, that on YouTube. Good. Yeah. How difficult it is to gain visibility on the platform. Yeah, I feel bro. like it's getting a little easier, you know? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, you can, you can get this set up for less than 200 bucks. Dope. Like with the interface, interface, microphone, cable, pop filter, like boom, done deal. Mm. Just plug it in, you're mm. good to go. Cool. Yep. So what did you want to talk about? Um, so I was gonna, I was gonna roll ask... tape first, and then we can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you recording on your video? Yep. Nice. So check, check one, two. Oh, oops. shoot! I gotta mute that. Ah. Perfect. Yeah. So All right, I'm now like... we're good. So I wanted to just talk about like briefly. Um, I got a couple questions here, but I want to just make mm -hmm. it as simple as possible for you to just tell me a little bit about. Cause I don't even know you like that much. Like we know each other from like working for the right. past few years. Yeah. So I kind of like want to take this opportunity with a lot of people that kind of encouraged me throughout the years and my journey, and nice. let's find out like a little bit about them while I'm doing kind of like this documenting to try, try, kind of come up with some sort of biography or something. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Like podcast, chapter one, chapter two, and all the way with the vlogging and stuff like that. Dude, that's cool. Um, so, Very cool. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm excited about it. So I guess, um, like, tell me a little bit about yourself, like a quick snippet, your history, where you were in high school, how'd you get to where you are now, you know, <laughs> no, like, high school. what you wanted to be when you grew up, is this what that's, you wanted to be when you grew up? Answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, um, well, no, first of all, I'm like, that's super cool that I'm one of those people, so yeah, thank you, and I'm, I'm really glad, like, that's, that's awesome, like, you're one of those people that it's always, it's so cool to just watch what you're doing, and like, where you're going, and, mm -hmm. you know, you move forward, you know, right, which is nice to, nice to see, um, but, you know, I, I always, I think I started playing, you know, I started playing music in, like, eighth grade. I started with bass guitar and FL Studio, like, And how old three, are you now? 29. 29, okay. Yep, about to be 30 this month. Okay. So, so I started in, like, eighth grade. That was, how old are you in eighth grade? I don't even know. 12? Jeez, yeah, like, 13, 12, 11, something, something like that. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. Something like that. But, yeah, so, I started on FL Studio, okay. which it was, like, three back then. They just released... 20 mm. mind you they skipped a few they went from 12 to 20 for mm. their 20th anniversary or whatever but back then it was like way simpler you know it was just you're looping little beats and drums and stuff like that gotcha. you know it was really really simple compared to what it is now but um i always really loved that idea of just being able to make stuff on your own mm. you know not, not because i like working with other musicians and stuff like that but I don't know, there's just something really cool about being able to sit down with nothing and then six hours later having a full song, Wow. you know, without yeah. having to 
talk to anybody or do anything. It's just, you know, from start to finish, mm. one session. You know, like, wow. that's amazing. Did it you always know? take it? Is it six hours? Like, that's the first time? Or was it... Did it take you a while to get to six hours give or, to create Give or something? take. Okay. Yeah, it took a while to get to that point where I could really move quickly right. with stuff, you know. But um, but I always just really liked that aspect of it. You know, I played in a bunch of different bands growing up. Like, I did indie rock. I did black metal for a while, mm. which is interesting, interesting. you know. Um, but, like, all, all this different stuff. Um, I was in electronica band for a little while with one other guy that I went to high school with. And, um, and all of that stuff kind of led up to where I am now. Mm. And it's cool, though. It's, it's really cool to, you know, look back and have done so many different things because I think that really um, my influences were coming from all these different places, you know. And I had time to study each of these kind of, you know, genres and families, mm. you know, before moving on to the next thing, right. you know. So, like, all of those things... I feel like the indie rock thing, I got a lot of, you know, the, the rock, pop, shoegaze, like all the, you know, that's kind of like where we stood mm -hmm. as a band. Um, but I got to experiment with a lot of that stuff. And I kind of carry that into my production now right. when I'm doing like pop music and R&B music and, you know, ambient right. electronic music, stuff right. like that, you know. The metal stuff had a huge influence on the dubstep stuff that I do mm -hmm. now, you know, because those yeah. have so many parallels. You know, gotcha. with like the, the sort of aggression and the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the abrasiveness to it, you know? Yeah. Uh, like the breakdowns and the, the syncopated rhythms and stuff like that, you know? But yeah, so I started in eighth grade and I kind of went, went through high school just kind of having fun with it. I went to CCSU for jazz. Okay. So there's another one. Yeah. You know, went to CCSU for jazz. Um, had a lot of fun, like it was cool, but I didn't love it. You know, it wasn't you my to, okay. wasn't my passion. Okay, but I'm still you. glad that I did it. You okay. know, um, I was a really crappy bass player <laughs> in, in college. Like it, it's weird when you you feel like you're you know relatively okay, decent at doing something, mm -hmm. and then you like sort of change the context a little bit, and you feel like you're the worst one in the room all the time. Right. You know, and that's kind of how I felt, which was challenging, but also uh, a little discouraging sometimes mm. you know it was a good challenge but it was like man this is not really where i want to be going you know interesting um, what was it that what, was it a particular time in your life or something that just said that i don't want like how were you so vision oriented to the point where no matter what you did like you knew jazz you knew jazz is what you wanted like what you went to school for but you had this passion and this vision of what you wanted to do it w it was kind of like I think at that point it was more of just a gut feeling. Gotcha. You know, okay. just wasn't didn't feel like I could see myself doing that in ten years. You know, Got you. with the, with the jazz stuff, it was cool, but you know, and even to pedal and you graduated back to, from. No, I didn't okay. actually. Oh, Dropped yeah. out three okay. years in. You wow. Know? Just, I just said okay. this isn't what I want to do. You know. Hmm. Interesting. And um, and I I I was just kind of being honest with myself. It's not that I couldn't do it. You okay. know. Right. It's it's like I, I was passing the classes and stuff. It wasn't it wasn't difficult, you know. I didn't I didn't feel like it was too hard or anything. It was just I felt like I was you know, like school is an investment, you know, and right. you're going down this path and I'm sort of looking behind me realizing that like that was the path that I wanted back there. Wow. You know, so I was wow. like, Let me just get off That's this powerful. path and go somewhere Not else. Not many people you know? do that though. People a lot of people they for whatever reason, their parents, their loved ones, their significant other telling them finish college, go to school. Yeah. And there's all these pressures in life that mm -hmm. are telling you, you need to finish school in order to get a good job. Right. Um, what is it that drove you to just say, you know what, regardless of the risks that are out there from dropping out and searching for your passion, like, what is it that just said... I'm going for it regardless of the risks. Weren't there any worries or anything like that? Oh, definitely were, yeah. And there were, you know, it was like nor normal, exactly like you said, you know, pushback from parents, like, no, you gotta finish, this and that and the other thing. Mm -hmm. But um, there were, there were like little windows of opportunity and things that I really enjoyed that, um, that I felt like were a little bit reassuring. 
Like, I think around that time, I was also doing a lot of competitive remixing for, okay. for music production. And I don't even remember where that fell in the timeline. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's where I felt like you can, you can kind of read a room, so to speak. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, when I was at school doing that, I felt totally just out of place, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I was doing this, I felt like I was doing exactly what I needed to be doing, yes. you know? And I think that's that's what I was going off of. Dude, you know, people that was look it. for lifetimes trying to look for that purpose and that dream, what they yeah. want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm so, I'm lucky. You so know? your passion is music to say to be safe. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, because that's one of the questions that I had here. Like, what's your passion? Um, so you ended up from pursuing your fashion to having your own business. And running mm -hmm. this business tell me a little bit about torches academy what it does how it was born and what your plans are for yeah. it yeah <laughs> you know it's funny it's it's like you know when so when i sort of conceptualized torches academy i it's not really what it is when i conceptualized it you know okay. when i first made it i decided that you know I've, I've done a lot of music i've written a lot of music of you know i've produced this and that and the other thing and one thing that I would really like to do, and I was kind of dabbling with it for a long time, but is, um, is teach, you know, but I didn't want to teach in the regular music education system because I feel like there isn't really a, a place for electronic music mm. yet, you know, mm. and it's actually just now starting to come to the forefront, like, you know, schools and universities and, you know, after school programs are looking at, you know, okay, what, what's going on with modern music? Cause like, you know the kids aren't interested in right. classical and jazz and stuff like that right. well some are and, th and that's great but mm -hmm. you know they want to find they want to be able to relate to the music that they're listening to you know recreationally all the time right. you know and when there's that big of a gap between what's being taught and what's being listened to they're not they're not buying it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um you know music production when i was learning how to do it was something that you know me and the circle of producers that I sort of fell into contact with on that journey, you know, we kind of had to figure out a lot of things ourselves, you know, and mm -hmm. it just took right. a, a stupid long time <laughs> to figure out how to do things that retrospectively were yeah. so simple, we just didn't know, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was that was really like my inspiration for wanting to do, you know, even like private lessons or something, you know, like if, if someone has an interest, you know, I can save them probably years and years and years just by helping them with those tiny little things you know oh it's not that big of a deal you just you know flick this on or you know do that and it's like and then it's like light bulb moment and they can keep moving they don't have to spend months trying to find workarounds for little things like that you know right. Right. so that's kind of why i wanted to do it and um i made a connection with Dwayne here at paradigm academy and he wanted to incorporate uh like a music division to paradigm you know mm -hmm. so that really worked out nicely you know it was perfect because that was right around the same time that i started um conceptualizing torches academy which originally was supposed to just be an online deal you know right. it was I'm supposed to be me. yeah it was supposed to be like online lessons where i wanted to do online classrooms mm -hmm. you know so it would be like i would make tutorials and videos and how to's and stuff like that but we would also the kids would congregate in like an online classroom where we'd have sort of like a question of the day or a couple questions of the day and it's like this is what we're going to learn how to do and they can chat you know in in the in the room and and ask questions gotcha. and make points and this and that the other that's thing, awesome you know? so that was kind of the idea um and and that was nice because i i feel like the kids are always on their phones online doing this and that and the other thing and and you know not a lot of people were teaching that in an education